Welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, today, uh, we're going to use Gauss's law to determine uh, the electric field inside and outside of a fuzzy ball of charge. Uh, but this fuzzy ball is a little special in that the charge within it is not equally distributed. Okay, So I've got a little sketch up here. Here's our fuzzy ball. The fuzzy ball has a radius big R. We're going to look at some point inside to start with. Uh, we'll call that little r, okay, and that's going to vary. And the charge density within the fuzzy ball, which is rho, uh, is proportional to r cubed. It's br cubed, okay? So the idea being um, at the center of the ball, there's almost no charge. And as you walk outward from or crawl outward from the ball, the charge gets more and more dense, okay? So um, it's going to create an unusual electric field inside the ball. We'll also find the electric field outside the ball, which um, actually should be simple, and we'll talk about that too. But we'll start with inside. So uh, we're going to start with Gauss's law and find the electric field inside, at this spot right here, the fuzzy ball of charge. So we start with uh, Gauss's law, which is uh, integral, surface area integral, so that's a closed surface area integral of E dot dA equals Q in over epsilon naught. Okay, so that's our Gauss's law. Now, having said that, um, for this fuzzy ball of charge, you've got electric fields, assuming it's positive, you, you'll have electric fields emanating outward. It'll be evenly distributed um, because this is even with the, the volume. So uh, e dot dA will simply be the E times the area, surface area of this little sphere. The surface area of this little sphere is 4 pi r squared. So the only hard part in this whole entire problem is finding Q in. How much charge have we captured inside that, that little sphere? Okay, So that's where we're going to spend most of our time on this. So um, I'll start with the definition of <laughs> volume density. Rho is dQ dV. Or dQ is rho dV. And we're going to integrate to find Q in that ball. So we're going to integrate rho dV. Well, the first thing you need to know is what is dV. So that's, that's the, this is by far right now, this moment is the hardest part of this whole entire problem is what's dV. Well, we're going to take, we're, what we're going to do is take the ball a solid ball, and we're going to break it down into concentric shells. So imagine a really thin shell, okay? And that's going to be our differential volume, our little tiny chunk of the overall volume. Now, what is the volume of, so imagine basically this little spherical shell, just the shell, not inside of it, but just this little shell. Um, its thickness is dr. So if we know for the fine volume, if we know area times thickness, that will give us the volume. It's like a, like, an, like a rectangular solid would be if you take the surface area of that rectangular solid times its height, that's its volume. We're going to do the same thing. So imagine you have this surface, you unfold it, it's going to have an area, and you multiply that by its thickness, and that's your dv. Well, the area of this little guy is just um, the area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. The thickness is dr. So dv, and I'll write this kind of off to the side here, dv is um, dA times dr, okay, which is 4 pi r squared dr. Okay. So, and actually, that would really be area times dr. Apologize for that. So, area times dr, which is 4 pi r squared dr. So, you're taking the, the area of that shell times its thickness. So, we're going to take this and plug it in here. We're going to sub in for rho this, okay? So, your dq, which when we integrate that will become q in, okay, is going to equal the integral of rho, which is br cubed times dv, which is 4 pi r squared dr. And r goes from 
zero to little r, okay? Um, I'll finish this up here. So we can pull out the four pi and the b. So qn equals four pi b. And we're just integrating r to the third times r to the second is r to the fifth. So integral r to the fifth times dr from zero to r. So that's just our reverse power rule. So you get qn equals four pi b um, r to the sixth over six from zero to r, uh, which just becomes r to the sixth. The four and the six partially reduce, you get a two thirds. So you got qn equals two pi b over three times r to the sixth, okay? And that's the hardest part of this whole problem. Uh, once you've got qn, um, yes, once you've got qn, the rest of it's easy. So now we plug that in right there, okay? And again, we know when we, when we integrate e dot dA, it's just e times the area, the surface area of that sphere, which is four pi r squared. So we'll continue this right there. So when you integrate that, you got e times 4 pi r squared equals qn, which is this, 2 pi b over 3 r to the sixth, all over epsilon naught, okay? And you get a, a, a sum canceling here. The pi's drop out. Um, the, the 2 and the 4 become an 8. The 3 goes down here. You got r to the second times r to the sixth. Um, oh, but that means r to the second, r to the sixth partially cancel. This becomes r to the fourth. And you get a result, okay? Uh, e is equal to b r to the fourth over six epsilon naught, okay? Um, when you move this, this, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 2. When you move that 2 down here, 2 times 3 is 6. So that is your electric field inside of the fuzzy ball of charge. Um, notice it's, it varies with r to the fourth. It's not a normal function that we've had in the past. Okay. So that's the electric field inside. What about the electric field outside? Well, good news, you don't have to redo all that integration. The only thing you have to do is... If you're outside this thing, let's say you're there, when you go to integrate rho dv, what are your limits of integration now? Okay, You have to ask yourself, where does the charge end? Do you go from 0 to here? No. You go from 0 until the charge stops existing, which is here, which is big R. So all you do is you change this from zero to little r, you change it to zero to big R. So your qn, instead of being this, is the same exact expression except for it's big R to the sixth. So let's write that down. Okay, qn equals two pi b over three big R to the sixth. Okay, now before we, we finish this off, when you're outside the fuzzy ball charge, it should act like a point charge. If it's going to act like a point charge, what mathematical relationship should E take with R? Well, we know that for a point charge, the electric field is kq over R squared. It should be an inverse square. Okay, so let's see if we get that. So we're going to use Gauss's law. Uh, e times the area, which is 4 pi little r squared, equals qn, which is this stuff. 2 pi b over 3 big R to the sixth, all over epsilon naught. Well, sure enough, the only variable here is little r cubed. Again, your pi's drop out, the 2 and this cancel to 2, and you get E outside this thing is equal to uh, b big R to the sixth over 3, or I'm sorry, 6, 6, epsilon naught, little r squared, okay? 
So that is E outside of this thing. And it does follow an inverse squared law. It's some constant times 1 over r squared. Now having said all that, it should be equivalent to kq over r squared. So check it out. Um, if we look at q in, the total charge of our, of our sphere is when you plug this in. Okay, so Q of the entire fuzzy ball of charge is simply this. So I'm going to write that down. 2 pi B big R to the sixth over 3. I'm going to get B by itself. So B equals 3Q over 2 pi R to the sixth. I'm then going to sub that in for B right here. And if we do that, check out what happens. E out equals b, which is 3q over 2 pi r to the sixth, times r to the sixth over 6 epsilon naught little r squared. Okay, bunch of stuff cancels here. Um, you end up with q over 4 pi epsilon naught little r squared. So um, you've you got, you got a 12 down here, 3 over 12 is 4. Um, your pi is down here. The r of the 6 drop out. Um, so you end up with this, and you know that k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So you get kq over r squared, which is as it should be. If you're outside the fuzzy ball charge, it should behave like a point charge, and sure enough, it does. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.